Hello. So in this lesson, we are looking at a special case for integration. So this is reversing the train rule, but um, here we've got just a special case. And it's something that you really need to learn to recognise in any fraction that you're given. Um, I understand it can be quite difficult because, you know, you might be looking at partial fractions, you're looking at log and all the rest of it, but... Uh, what, what you're looking for here is, as it states here, if you have got a function of x, if that is in the denominator and in the numerator, you've got that function and uh, its derivative, then we get uh, a sort of a standard result, and that result is that the answer would be a log, okay, of that original function, in the modulus sign again, because of substituting only positive values of x into the log function, and then just that plus c for any constant that may have been lost in the differentiating there. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples and show you what I mean by this. So if we have a look at this case here, um, so you'd start to consider if my denominator was the function of x, so let's say f of x is equal to that x squared plus 1, when I take the derivative of that, or differentiate it, what will I get? I'll get 2x. So I have indeed got a case here where the numerator is 2x, which is the differentiated version of the original function um, that I've got there. So our standard result would just be ln modulus sign x squared plus 1 plus c. And, and that's it. That's the, the principle we're sort of looking at to begin with. Um, Let's just take a look at one other example. Okay, so here it is. This one, um, you know, it's not quite as obvious as I think the previous one. Um, so let, let's begin again. So if my function is that denominator, 3 plus 2 sine of x, then is the derivative, is the numerator the derivative of that? So thinking if I differentiate that, the 3 will disappear then I'll get a 2, and when we think about differentiating sine, cosine, minus sine, minus cosine, um, when differentiated, sine goes to positive cosine, so I've got 2 cosine of x. Now, that doesn't quite look identical, does it? Because if it was strictly correct, what I'd actually have is the integral of 2 cosine of x all over 3 plus 2 sine of x with respect to x. And then I could just quite simply say that that is ln of the denominator, so modulus 3 plus 2 sine of x plus c. However, it's not quite that simple, is it? The difference between the, new, the example that I've been given to calculate and the one that I've got here is that 2. That is just a constant, it just means that this one has been sorry, this one is being multiplied by 2. How do I compensate for that then and get it to just be 1, 1 cosine of x? Well, you've got to think about it and consider that I'd need to have a half here, okay, because by putting a half at that beginning, the 2 and the 2 there will cancel so that it looks like the actual question that I've been given of cosine x over 3 plus 2 sine of x. So what I need to do with my answer is just put that half at the beginning, okay, to show um, or to compensate for the fact that I don't have that 2 as a coefficient of the cosine of x. Okay, so ideally before moving forward, um, what I would like you to do is go to page 302, exercise 11D and just work through question 1A to 1F where hopefully you'll begin to recognise that that numerator um, is the differential of the denominator, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to move on to show you the next part. So carry on after you've tried some of those questions. Okay, so a similar principle applies if you notice that within the expression you've got, um, there is a function, and it looks like you have got the derivative of that function uh, with it also, the added difficulty is, though, that constant part there, um, similar to like we had in the last question where we had to add in that half to compensate for the fact that the 2 wasn't in front of that cosine. So just flick back if you want to remind yourself of that. 
Um, so let's have a look at an example of this. So it's it's reversing that chain rule. And what you've got to consider is, you know, does it look like it's had the chain rule applied? And if so, how are you going to undo that? So really what we need to think about here is what uh, would have differentiated to have given us that x squared plus 5 to the power of 3. Well, if I've applied the chain rule, that means I have differ well differentiated, and that means I've reduced the power by 1. So let's have a look at what happens if I say that it was to the power of 4. So I have this function, and unfortunately you do just have to go through this thought process of thinking, what was it before I differentiated it? Um, so that when you're doing the integration to reverse that differentiation process, what does it look like? So dy by dx of this function. So chain rule, because I've got a function and a function. Uh, so the x squared, when I differentiate this expression inside, I'd have 2x. Okay, then when I differentiate it as a whole, I'd have brought that 4 down. The x squared plus 5 would have remained the same. And then I would have reduced the power by 1, so I'd get this. So all in all, 8x brackets x squared plus 5 close brackets to the power of 3. Lovely. So let's have a look at which bits match up. So the x squared plus 5 to the power of 3 matches up, and that x in front of it also matches up. So when I'm reversing differentiation, I know that for this function, before it got differentiated, mostly it would have been this. Okay, so just to go over that again, if I differentiate this to get this, then if I integrate it to reverse that differentiation, it would have gone back to there. The only thing that's missing, again, is this 8. Okay, I did not have an 8 at the beginning here. So how do I compensate for that? Well, I need to put an 8 at the front because clearly if that 8 has turned into 1x, I must have taken an 8th of it. And that is it with our plus c on the end. Okay, so here is another example of this. Um, now in terms of that integrating a function that's been differentiated with the original function. Uh, you'll notice here though that we're, we're starting to work with uh, trig functions. So cosine x sine squared x. Well, you can kind of see that you know one is the differential of the other. So again, going back to our sort of little axis, sine, cosine, minus sine, minus cosine. Um, sine does differentiate to give us cosine. That squared bit though is adding a little bit of complexity to it. So, you know, really thinking it through, if I've differentiated something, the power has reduced by one. So if my power on that sign is two, then more than likely in the original, it was three. So sine of the cubed of x. Okay, Let, let's rewrite that and see if differentiating it does give us what we've got here. So if I rewrote that, um, the way that some of you work with it, is we say that that is brackets sine of x cubed. Okay, and if we did the chain rule on that, dy by dx, uh, the function inside is sine x, so that would become cosine of x. Again, chain rule because it's a function in a function. Then that 3 would have come down to the front. I'd have had a sine of x, and that would have still been squared. So tidying that up, the 3 would come to the front. I'd have that cosine of x, and I'd have that sine squared of x there. Okay, I don't actually need to do anything else because that 3 is exactly the same as the 3 that I've got here. So I don't need to worry about any compensating. So done. If um, differentiating gives me this function, which is what I've got here, then integrating will take me back to the original function. So my answer will be y equals sine cubed of x plus c. So again, remembering that plus c because we've got no limits on the integral. Okay. Um, 
So this is what I would like you to do then. Uh, now that you've finished looking at those examples, uh, finish off question one, uh, work through question two. So that is the minimum of what I'd like you to do. There's my cat there saying hi. Um, and then if you want to really challenge yourself, please feel free to go on to try question three and four. So just a final recap, we're looking to integrate any functions where the top is the derivative of the denominator or any functions which have clearly been, uh, you know, the chain rule applied where you've got that function inside differentiated and the original function there with the power reduced by one.